Out of the Blue, proudly brought to you by Brooklyn Valley. Another surprise! Out of the Blue. You want that surprise? Out of the Blue. Come with me across the sea. Nothing but blue skies. Out of the blue. You want some chili with those fries? Out of the blue. Hi there. Welcome to Margaret River in Western Australia. You know, it was once described as a chilled out surfy town. Today, it's a popular base for enjoying the region's fine flavours and spectacular scenery. And it's where we come for today's episode of Out of the Blue. Margaret River is an easy three and a half hour drive from Perth via the coast or country. In today's program, we learn all about abalone and cook up a creamy marinara at Brooklyn Valley Winery. Then I'm gonna learn how to make chocolate and I'm gonna eat it, yep. But first I speak with Bernice about the history of this interesting region. Bernice, tell me a little bit about the history of Margaret River and was there actually a Margaret? Well, Margaret River, the town, really didn't exist as such until uh, 1910. It was very small, there were still only three houses in Margaret River. But of course the Margaret River region with uh, Aboriginal people living here and European settlement started much earlier. So Bernice, who was Margaret? Well, her name was Margaret Witcher, and she was a young woman who was admired by one of the colonists here. He, at one point, proposed to her father, and we believe that he named the Margaret River in honour of Margaret Witcher in the hope that it would uh, help her father to look kindly on his proposal. Now, most people know the Margaret River as a wine region. When did all that start? Well, the first grapes were planted in the 1830s by the colonists, but the first real commercial winery uh, grapes were planted in the mid-1960s. And what about things like surfing and the beautiful beaches here? When you're talking about Margaret River, you, it is all about the environment, and the surfing was always a big part of that. The first surfers arrived, I think, in the 20s. The, the people who were coming to enjoy the surf first began to start moving here and living here. And that really, I think, had a lot to do with the moving towards the kind of culture and ethos that we have in Margaret River still today. It's a very chilled kind of place. Bernice, tell me a little bit about this beautiful old building we're standing in today. Well, we're standing in the old settlement right next to the Margaret River, and this building is an old groupie house. And this house is uh, the, the kind of house that people would have lived in at that time. And actually the group settlement was important to the de development of Margaret River as a town because it was the groupies that meant that people needed the infrastructure. So in Margaret River they began to develop shops and places for people to, to gather and it was one of the main reasons why Margaret River as a town began to develop. After the break, we talked to Brad about abalone, which he cooks in very simple flavours. Now, just up the road from Margaret River is a company that's farming a product you wouldn't expect, abalone. Brad Adams is a second generation abalone diver and he really knows his stuff. My father, Terry Adams, uh, founded the industry here in the late 60s. He found the abalone here. I started commercial diving when I was around 24 after I'd finished university. I dived in the south coast between Augusta all the way to Esperance, um, harvesting abalone off a quota every year. We've tried a number of ways to grow abalone in the past. We've tried on land, we've done some barrel culture, we've done some cage culture. But 
the best way to do it is just in nature. They're basically just a, a snail, but they live in the ocean. So they eat uh, seaweed. The area off here in Flinders Bay is perfect for what we're doing. There's lots of seagrass beds. Um, it's a sheltered area. If there was rocks for the abalone to live on, there would actually be um, lots of abalone on those rocks. So the idea evolved that let's put some rocks out there, place some juvenile reared abalone, which we select at 40 millimetres from the hatchery, and let them grow for three years, and they just, nature looks after themselves. We don't do anything really, we just put the abalone there, and we end up with just an absolutely gorgeous product like this after three years. Um, so this is the green lip abalone, um, it's in high demand in China, and the quality of product we get is just absolutely fantastic, it's pristine. This is exactly what you will get from the wild. So it's, it's highly sought after in uh, Asian countries particularly, uh, especially China, and China's growing and the, the market for abalone in China is just becoming insatiable and the demand, they certainly um, love it because it's just a unique texture, it's got unique flavours, it's old emperor's food, they used to actually, um, it's quite hard to get back in the old days and I think with the Chinese they love that sort of um, eating where the food is you know, so special that um, if they're seen to be eating they have great face. It's quite tender, it's got a, a beautiful unique ocean flavour and it's got this crisp sort of texture to it as well. A bit of wasabi and soy sauce and it's just delicious. Now Brad, I was just wondering, you're talking about you love abalone sashimi. Can you show us how to do it? I'm not too sure. sure. I, I must admit, I've never had it sashimi. Oh, look, it's the best yeah. way to have abalone, especially okay. when they're fresh, yes. straight out of the ocean like this. Okay. So you collect uh, a freshly harvested abalone. This mm. is one that's been on our reefs for three years. It's okay. around about 130 mil. You use the shuck and iron, mm. take them out, just peel them out slowly like that. Yep. Then we just need to uh, quickly tenderise it. Okay. Now you need right. to tenderise them, yep. it stops rigor mortis and yep. it makes the abalone absolutely, okay. absolutely delectable. Right. So it's just one. With a 4B2. Is that it? That's it, mate. You don't have to do oh. nothing more than that. Okay. Just enough. Basically, oh, it just stops it. those chemicals that yeah. in rigor mortis yes. from being released. Yep, yeah. okay. So then, just take that mouthpiece off mm. and then just quickly is that right? slice it nice and So, this is how they'd serve it in Japan, for example? This or China? China? Uh, the Chinese are not onto the sashimi yet. The Chinese oh, visitors okay. I've had here have been quite amazed is by, oh, by so this. So, it's the Japanese market? The Japanese market, okay. for sure. They love their sashimi. Yeah. Um, so look, you just grab the abalone like that, and yeah. just lay them out on the plate. Simple as that. Simple as that. With a bit of wasabi and yeah. your sauce. For my sauce, I chop some coriander and chilli with a squeeze of a lime and a dash of soy and pop a squeeze of wasabi on the side. There we are. Look okay. at that. Just so looking forward to this. Never tried it before. Little fork, here we go. I might pick it up like that and try it. I can't wait to get it. You're going to need it. that bite of the wasabi as well. I just love Put that, that stuff. Put on there like that. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, it's, it's a, a firm taste. Yeah, it's got a crunch. Mmm. And that's one way. Absolutely. And then the other way is cooking them. Let's try that. The sauté? Absolutely. Ten seconds, all you need. Now, Brad, this is the other recipe you have, and it looks pretty simple. Yep, it's just a straight sauté, freshly sliced abalone, a bit of garlic, mm -hmm. and the butter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just push that down. Yeah, that's right. So we'll just put some butter in there. And really, like any seafood, don't want to overcook it. Ten seconds. Really oh, really? Yeah, it's it's yeah. like that. It's, it's, it's a bit like in, calamari. Absolutely. Or, in or and out. Less. You overcook it, and it just yeah. takes the flavour out. And so we'll just And you're getting get the beautiful garlic. perfume of that uh, garlic coming off there. Lovely, it's isn't stunning. it? Yeah. So in, so in there, you've cut you, it the same way as you did for the sashimi. Yep. So yep. we're just cooking it just like you might cook a bit of whiting. Yes. Put it in there. Put it sliced up. Okay. All right, just mix it around. So if you just want to put yep. a bit of salt and pepper on there now. A bit like that. I reckon I'm about ready to pull this out. Okay. Here we are. Oh, that's looking good. And look at this so, beautiful shell too. So this shell here, oh. Michael, is in my years of abalone diving, it's the largest one that I ever found in 
out of all the hundreds of thousands of abalone I came across. Yeah. So I kept that as a... So how old do you think that might be? Well, he'd be been? about 15 years old. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so let's just That's use it. him as a nice plate. Oh, look at that. Wouldn't that be fantastic to serve that at a table and you could all sit around and a little bit of a, a squeeze of lemon on that. There we are. Oh, fabulous. So here we go. I can't wait to try this bit. I'll just get him up there. Just use your fingers, mate. Oh. oh. That is so tender. Completely different texture, isn't it's it? It's totally different. Mm. That is amazing. Really, really good. If Australians ever catch on to this, you're going to be a very, very busy person. <laughs> well, I hope so. That is amazing, isn't it? Hey, look, by the time you come back, there'll be nothing of this left. I know what you're all thinking. What's chocolate got to do with fish? Nothing! And that's why we're here. So let's go. Daniel, tell me the story of the Margaret River Chocolate Company. Well, the Margaret River Chocolate Company was started um, and is still privately owned by Patrick Coward and Martin Black. And I think chocolate and desserts was just a passion and a love of theirs. So they thought, why not? Let's stick a chocolate factory in, in the middle of the bush here, this beautiful, iconic region. So what is it about sort of handmade chocolate? What do people love about all that? I think it's the, it's the smell. Um, we have a viewing window so people can see what we're doing. You know, we have a lot of different products, hugely popular, so I guess there's a little bit of something for everybody. Uh, we do do master classes with pairings with chocolate and wine. Um, and I think that now that single origin chocolate is starting to become a lot more popular, there are a lot of similar characteristics in how you can taste profile chocolate um, and, and it's different. And match it with, with and, wine. And match it with is different right? wines, yeah. You know, for you, for example, what's your favourite chocolate? You must have one. Jamaica coconut is probably my favourite. So we, we toast the coconut, the kitchen is just insane to walk through. The, the aroma of the coconut imagine. is yeah, crazy. Yeah. So that's probably my personal favourite. Yeah. I'll try some of those. Yeah. Daniel, thank you. No problem. Thank you. We've taken a drive up the road a bit to Brooklyn Valley Winery, which is the region's most highly decorated producer in Australian wine shows. Brooklyn Valley was planted in the mid-1980s. Um, they selected sites in the, the heart of the Willie Abrupt district and they planted it in a style which is very European. It's very closely planted vines and they did that so that each vine only has to produce a small amount of fruit so that it gives it very strong flavour intensity and then that allows that flavour to then go through into the, the final wine that the winemakers produce. I believe that Brooklyn Valley has been so successful over the years because Margaret River is a site that is surrounded by ocean on all three sides, uh, which gives it a very strong maritime climate, which means we don't get any strong heat spikes and it's optimal temperature ranges. We're right on the edge of the Lewin Naturalist Scarp, which means that we've got beautiful loamy gravel soils, which allows these vines to find all the nutrients they require but they hold them back enough so that they don't become so vigorous that we don't get the, the flavour that we require. I believe it's been so, such a successful site because it's a combination of climate, soil, and also what we do in the vineyard and the winemaking team. So we work very hard to make sure that we leave the right amount of buds on the vines to give us the right amount of fruit, which then we hand over to the winemakers to produce classic Margaret River style Chardonnay um, without having to do too much extra work to it. The 
chief winemaker here at Brooklyn Valley, was interested in helping me out to cook up a creamy fettuccine marinara. Now you've just met Steve, the viticulturalist, and alongside of me is Courtney, who is the winemaker. And Courtney has graciously offered to help me make a most amazing simple dish. Starting off yes. with, with butter. Okay. And also a little bit of olive oil. So you can mix the two together. It's not too bad with a dish like this. Okay. Now this butter we got uh, locally, it's capel butter. Oh, well, it's fantastic. We put that on there. Now you can uh, pass me the garlic. We've uh, just bruised that a little bit. But, and also anchovy. Now, because this is a seafood recipe, we're just going to spice up a little bit with some anchovy. Can you smell the garlic? I can. It's terrific. It smells delicious. Because as a winemaker, you would have a wonderful sensory nose and taste. I spend you? a lot of time tasting and smelling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, well, that's, that's going along famously there. OK, so that's looking good. I think now we can add a, a little bit of wine, uh, your beautiful Chardonnay. Lovely. I'll get you to tell so, me about that. Yes, how much How much would we about, like? About, yeah, about all of that. All of that? <laughs> no problem. I couldn't have any. Maybe a squeeze of lemon too. Yes. Thanks. But uh, Courtney, do you, uh, do you cook much? I do, I love cooking. Okay. With a glass With of With a glass of Chardonnay, definitely. Oh, I think now we really could add the cream yeah, into that. And go, that's it, beautiful. There we go. We did say it's going to be creamy fettuccine. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, so that's going around there like that. Now we've got some corn flour there. so. Can you carefully just sort of dust it over? It is a little bit windy, isn't it? It is quite windy. <laughs> no, that's what we see how we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. There we go. All right, okay. This is the exciting part now. Seriously is. Great. What we're going to do, we've got some mussels here. We're going to put, this is for about no, a couple of people. And put those in there like that. Uh, salmon, put that in there like that. Some beautiful scallop, put those in some wonderful prawns, put them in like that. So there we are, we have that in there. What we're going to do is put the lid on that, because it is, w is windy. It's quite windy. Right there. <laughs> we'll, put, we'll put the lid on it. I reckon we'll come back in about five or ten minutes. After the break, we marry the pasta to the sauce and the dish to the wine. Now, Courtney, that's been about what, five minutes, five or six minutes. Yeah. Take the lid off. Put it down oh, there. It's What's looking, it look? looking oh, good. Look at that. I reckon a little bit of pepper. Sprinkle that in. Yes, looking yummy. That's beautiful. And I, I sort of forgot something earlier. I reckon. Oh, the chili. I reckon this is just put the, put the icing on the cake. Look at that. And now I think, Courtney, it's ready for the pasta. Fantastic. Huh? Look at that. That fettuccine's been pre-cooked. We've put in some beautiful olive oil. Look at that. There we <gasps> go. Wow, 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 <coughs> There we go. Look. Okay. Put it back there for a while. I reckon another minute. Warm it through. There we are. Beautiful creamy fettuccine marinara. Thank you, Courtney, for helping me with that. You My did a pleasure. great job. <laughs> I'm just really now looking forward to what wine are you going to choose? when we sit down by the brook and eat it. It was really great getting to cook this dish with Michael because I really felt like I got to know the ingredients and the flavours that are going to be in the dish. And I really think that I'd recommend our Brooklyn Valley uh, Estate Chardonnay, the 2014, which we actually used cooking the dish. It's got lovely um, aromatics of nougat and some brioche, some grilled nuts. It marries really well with the dish, particularly that beautiful acid line and uh, really tight, fine palate. Hope you've enjoyed our journey out west with its calm waters and tasty treats. Don't forget to visit outofthebluetv.com.au for recipes and of course those special offers from Brooklyn Valley.
Out of the Blue, proudly brought to you by Brooklyn Valley.